Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Street Gaming Center Come video, we're going to be discussing NVIDIA, specifically their conference, which has just finished. And the company, as expected, have indeed announced the RTX 2080, 2070, and 2080 Ti graphics cards. So let's start things out then with the release date for these GPUs. We will be looking at the 20th of September. So currently you can actually pre-order these GPUs. We'll get into pricing in just a moment. And various AIBs have released a different variants of these cards. So <laughs> the pricing then, yeah. So the RTX 2070 is going to retail from just 500 US dollars. Now, speaking for British pricing just for a second, you can currently order uh, a variety of different AIB GTX 2080 cards, uh, that's the Thai, excuse me, 2080 Thai cards, and they will cost you upwards of a thousand pounds. Meanwhile, the 2080s seem to be in the high 700s to mid 800 Great British Pound mark. So of course you can figure it out with your regional currency, but the too long didn't read here is they are considerably more expensive than the previous generation. In the not too distant future, in other words over the next couple of days, I'm going to release a full video going into the detail of the architecture of these GPUs, along with, of course, what has changed from one generation to the other. But suffice to say, NVIDIA did show a lot of the ray tracing ability. The tensor cores, of course, are also confirmed to be in there and overall the and the tuning architecture has certainly undergone some significant changes but still from the perspective of gamers it's a lot of cash so starting things out with the bottom of the uh, line we've got the rtx 2070 uh which is from 500 us dollars 2304 cuda cores 8 gigabytes of gddr6 memory and it can boost up to 1620 megahertz. Then we've got the 2080, which has been confirmed at 2944 CUDA cores. Once again, eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory at slightly higher clock speed though, 1710 megahertz. And then finally, the 2080 tie, and it has 4352 CUDA cores 11 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, 352 bit bus, and a clock speed of 1545 megahertz. Once again, the pricing for these cards, 500 US dollars for the regular AIB versions or 600 US dollars. I'm going to round it up because I don't think anyone really cares about a dollar. 600 US dollars for the founders edition. Uh, 700 US dollars for the uh, 2080 or 800 dollars for the Founders Edition, a thousand dollars for the 2080 Ti, and then finally 1100 dollars, and then finally uh, 1200 US dollars for the Founders Edition of the RTX 2080 GPUs. Now there were a lot of demos that were showed off during the event. Uh, we saw Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we saw, we saw Metro Exodus, we saw Battlefield, and without question, the games did look really impressive. Uh, and yes, you can make some arguments that you could achieve some of the effects that they were showing off with global illumination and screen space and all of this other stuff, but the bottom line is, in terms of the future of games, without any question, ray tracing is it. And we saw other games as well that are going to support this, including Final Fantasy and so on and so on. Basically speaking, the games looked absolutely amazing. Of course, there are a couple of caveats. The first caveat is that, well, yeah, those games support it, like once again, Metro and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but not all games support it. So you have to take that into consideration. The second is, if you've got, let's say, Rise of the Tomb Raider, or you've got Batman Arkham Knight, or you have any other game which does not support this, what type of performance benefit, and that is really down to this, like what is the benefit in terms of performance, can you expect? Uh, one thing that was unfortunately lacking from NVIDIA was a point-for-point -point comparison. Several times over, when he was saying, well, yeah, the performance versus, let's say, the, 20, uh, sorry, the 1080 tie, I was like, great, show me a graph, like show me a game, it doesn't matter which one, but let's say Crisis 3 for sake of argument, 
running at 4K on a 1080 uh, or even a 1080 Ti and then show me a same clip of the same game with, you know, the same things going on that, let's say, the Welcome to the Jungle level of Crisis Free uh, at 4K and once again the same graphical settings at, with a 2080 or a 2080 Ti. Now, of course, there are some significant architectural changes and there are additional CUDA cores to be found here. But the clock speed's not quite as great, and because we don't know all of the changes to the architecture, and we don't know exactly what type of performance improvements we're going to be getting, I find it really difficult right now to suggest to a lot of people to plonk down this amount of cash for an architecture. Now, that isn't to say don't do it. I'm simply saying that if you're scratching your head, do I purchase this card? I would say this, do you need a new card? So, for example, let's say you've got a GTX 1080 or 1080 Ti. Are you running a 1440p monitor? If so, then <laughs> mm, I would possibly suggest just waiting. I know it's really tempting after seeing all of the ray tracing demos, and obviously that was the thing, right? They wanted you to be really tempted and to buy this thing. And once again, I'm not uh, bad-mouthing NVIDIA. I'm aware that the amount of research alone that has gone into this GPU, the, the ray tracing cores alone, that took them around 10 years. So by the time you factor in research and development costs, by the time you factor in the size of the chip itself, the price of GDDR6 memory, the cost of the cooler, and all of this stuff, yes, of course, they are making some profit, but they're also reaping back research and development costs. And I have absolutely no qualms of them doing that. They can charge $10 billion if they wanted for this GPU. They could charge a trillion. They could charge your left lung, and it's down to consumers, as always, to say yes or no. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm very excited about this GPU. I'm very excited about the architecture, and I'm very interested to see what the future of games will look like. But... I also am not going to suggest you pre-order it without seeing in-game benchmarks. Now, I could not reveal this earlier because I was under embargo, so I would have been yelled at lots and lots and lots. But I did actually know the release date for the GPUs ahead of time. I obviously couldn't tell you guys that uh, because I was told by a certain AIB who shall remain nameless, but I'm pretty sure most of you who are regular watchers of this channel know this, uh, but they did tell me that I didn't know exact release date, but I know it was going to be mid-September. And so, you know, um, I'm not surprised by the release date. I had a feeling the pre-orders were going to be early, but I didn't know exactly the release date and I did not know the pricing. But at this kind of pricing, it really leaves a decision down to you. I, I suspect a lot of people are going to either flog their, oh, I'm sorry, sell. I'm using a British term. Then it's flog an American term when it comes to selling. I don't know. But anyway, you're going to, you're going to see a lot of 1080s, a lot of 1080 ties, a lot of 1070s, of course. All those GPUs are going to, and of course, Vegas and so on. They're going to start flooding the secondhand market, which will bring down the price. So for sake of argument, let's say you've got an RX 470 or a GTX 970. If you happen to see a really good deal on a GTX 1080 or 1080 tires, obviously they're going end of line, and you say, well, gee, I could plonk down like, you know, $500 on uh, the 2070, or I could maybe get this 1080, which we can assume is going to be roughly the same level of performance, although I want clarification on that. Once again, only in-game benchmarks are going to provide that insight. I could pick this up for like 300 bucks. It's hard for me to say, well, don't do that. With that said, ray tracing is going to be really cool. And I do know that people are going to want this technology. Of course, this is also coming from a place of like, well, it's still really bloody early. So how many games are implementing it? How well they implement it? What type of performance uh, impact that is there going to be, and I'm sure there will be an performance impact. That's something, of course, we're going to have to benchmark. And what is AMD going to counter with? Now, there's a whole video I'm going to put out with what are AMD going to do, and that's going to be over the next couple of days. But the bottom line for me, these cards are not, I mean, like, you know, Jensen Huang said that it's only 500 US dollars for the 2070. And once again, when you factor in the amount of technology in these things, great. No issue with that in terms of, yeah, okay, it's a lot of technology. It's like saying, I don't know, like the, the new Samsung Galaxy or the iPhones or whatever. 
they are premium products. These graphics cards are premium products, right? And without question, NVIDIA can charge whatever they want with them, and I have no problems with NVIDIA doing that. I'm simply saying, from the perspective of a lot of gamers, uh, and just reading comments online, looking at Twitch stream chats, and so on and so on, there's a lot of people who are upset by this, and a lot of people who are still on the fence. And for those individuals, once again, I would highly suggest you just wait. See what the performance is going to be like. Look at a couple of months to see if there's a price reduction. Uh, my personal opinion is that the architecture tuning itself looks really bloody impressive. I have a feeling that there's still a lot of room left in the Turing tank. I get this, I get this distinct impression that Nvidia could certainly do a refresh. A 7nm version of Turing, whatever that might be called, could possibly be in the works. It probably won't be this year, it might be later part of next year, and that would be a good way for them to squeeze a little more juice out of the orange. After all, if they did a 7nm refresh, they could either plonk in additional CUDA cores, say they could increase the number, I'm being kind of, you know, just pulling a ballpark figure out my ass, but they could increase the number by, let's say, 20%, and then they could simply increase the clock speeds a little bit as well and bring down the pricing, if that's what they wanted to do. But there are 18 billion transistors in the higher-end touring parts, and that is a lot of moving components. Without question, this is going to be the ultimate GPU for some time, and until AMD can counter it, which goodness knows what uh, we're going to be seeing from AMD with Navi or next-gen GPU, well, yeah. Overall, as I said, this is kind of just a first impression because the conference has just happened, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of press statements, NVIDIA answering a lot of questions, and there still are a lot of questions. Once again, I know I've said this like 300 times now, but it really, to me, is about game benchmarks. I'm sure Shadow of the Tomb Raider is going to look beautiful running at 4K on Turing. But it's going to look pretty damn nice on Pascal as well. If you've got a GTX 1080, if you've got a GTX 1080 tie, the question is, what type of performance benefits are you going to get? Because for some gamers, they just want the frame rates. Like if you're a competitive uh, player, for example, in certain games, frame rate is king. If you're driving a high resolution screen, and as particularly if you're a competitive gamer, frame rate is king. For example, if are we going to be able to see Rise of the Tomb Raider? I'm sorry, I keep calling it Rise of the Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Are we going to be able to see that game running at 4K 60 FPS or higher? That is still higher, right? With all of the bells and whistles on those. Uh, those questions have not been answered yet, and it is a bit of a shame, and that was the major issue I had with this conference. There was a lot of really cool demos, and NVIDIA continued to say how much more powerful these GPUs were when you start factoring in the tensor cores and you start factoring. Yeah, that's great, but those are just doing ray tracing stuff, and that is, once again, a really cool technology, and I have no issues with that. But once again, I do really want to see what the raw frame rate is going to be for games. And also other little things like uh, Ngen Sun Huang on the stage said that these GPUs were built for overclocking, that they overclocked incredibly well, and that the Founders Editions were five times quieter, even when overclocked, than the GTX 1080 Ti. That basically means you could not hear them. That essentially means that if you are powering just the fans on those things and someone dropped a pin, you would be able to hear the pin over the fan of the card. He said, and that was with uh, high-end overclocking. That wasn't just increasing the clocks a little bit. So what really can you get out of them? Like, is 200, 300, 400 megahertz, or 20 megahertz? Those are the kind of questions, once again, that we're going to have to wait and hear uh, about. I'm sorry, uh, wait and hear answers about. So... Uh, We'll have to wait. I'm sure there'll be a lot more information over the next couple of days, and I'm sure the benchmark, benchmarks excuse me, will also start to emerge. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on this. Let me know about the pricing. Let me know what NVIDIA would have to do to convince you. And, you know, just your thoughts and opinions overall. Like, what would you like AMD to do? Would you like them to stop selling, let's say, Vega, focus on Polaris and price reduce that? Would you perhaps be someone who just wants to grab a Pascal card right now and just say, screw it, Pascal's going end of line, I'm just going to jump on that, I'm not paying this amount of cash for this particular card, or you're like, eh, I'm just going to buy it, I don't care, I've got the spare capital. Let me know your thoughts and opinions, as usual, below in the comments. With all that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.